Okay, Dr. Patrick, this next question is for you. This is in your wheelhouse, and it's about the mRNA vaccine specifically. And since this is, for a lot of people, new technology, technology they haven't heard about, and there are rumors that this is somehow gene therapy and it's going to be impacting our own DNA within our cells. Can you speak to that? And, and what are your thoughts about those rumors? Well, sure. I, I, I think it's understandable for, for most people to, to be a little concerned because they've never heard of this mRNA technology. The word RNA is in it. And, you know, it, it's, it's a little, it's just it, overwhelming in, in a sense. And I think, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, when I was talking about, you know, from a thousand foot high, mile high, you know, viewpoint, how these mRNA vaccines work and how there's, you know, a sequence of the messenger RNA inside of a lipid nanoparticle and along with some other factors that essentially when that lipid nanoparticle with the mRNA gets inside of your cells, your cells themselves, our ribosomes, translate that mRNA into actual protein. And so really it's more accurate to be a protein making technology in a way. And um, But nonetheless, there has been a lot of fear that mRNA vaccines are, are gene therapy that are altering our DNA. And so to understand that, you, you need to understand, I mean, I think first and foremost, if someone says that to you, you might want to ask them, where inside the cell does DNA reside? And if they don't know the answer to that question, then they probably don't understand what they're saying. So our DNA is, resides in a part of our cell called the nucleus. It is protected by the, the, it's inside of a nucleus. And you can't, things don't just freely pass into the nucleus of the cell. In order to get inside of the nucleus of the cell, you have to have what's called a nuclear localization sequence. This is a very specific sequence um, that allows something to get inside of the nucleus. And so there's no nuclear localization sequence anywhere in this mRNA, uh, anywhere, you know, inside of the lipid nanoparticle. It's just, it's not present. It's not there. So there's no, there's no way for it to get inside of the nucleus of the cell. If somehow it did somehow miraculously get inside of the nucleus of, of, of our cell where our DNA resides, in order for it to alter our DNA, the mRNA would first have to become DNA. And in order for that to happen, you would need an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. There's no reverse transcriptase inside of our nucleus inside of the, you know, lipid nanoparticle with our MNA, it's not present. So um, that is not likely to happen. But if all those things were to happen somehow, then in order for the DNA, so if you somehow got inside the nucleus, turn the mRNA into DNA, and then in order for it to alter our DNA, you'd have to have something called an integrase enzyme. would have to integrate into our DNA to get in there to change it. And again, no integrase enzyme pre present there. It's not going to happen. So the chances of the mRNA vaccines actually changing our DNA are so small. I mean, it, it would just take some sort of sort of grand conspiracy where, you know, the we're, we're getting somehow getting these enzymes into this mRNA and it's doing all this stuff. I mean, like, it, it's just not going to happen. It's not biologically plausible. Dr. Schwell, anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, the, the central dogma of molecular biology is that DNA goes to RNA, RNA goes to protein. And what we're doing with the, the vaccine is we're simply instructing the ribosomes, which reside in the outer portion of the cell, to make the protein. This, by the way, is exactly what the virus does. And so if you're a little bit uh, freaked out or creeped out by the fact that your cell machinery is being taken over to make something that it shouldn't be making, well, uh, let me introduce you to COVID-19 because that's exactly what's happening in the in the viral infection. And ex instead of it happening just in one or two cells, it's happening in millions of cells. In fact, there's billions to trillions of copies of the virus that's being made in one individual, and it goes all throughout the body. So what's happening here with the vaccine is that it's simply using the, the ribosomes to make proteins. There's no aspect of the messenger RNA vaccines that, that you do anything with the nucleus, and it's the nucleus that holds the DNA, and that's where your genome is. Well, just to add to that, Dr. Schwell, you know, we, we, speaking of viruses and what viruses do, we know some viruses actually can 
change change back into DNA and affect our DNA. So HIV is one, some of the herpes viruses as well. Um, so so if anything, if there's anything to be worried about changing our DNA, it's it's actually viruses themselves. Dr. Schwell, working in the ICU, I know you've been following any potential treatment for COVID-19 very closely throughout the pandemic, and you've featured a number of potentially promising treatments um, in your COVID-19 update videos. And I want to ask your thoughts on this idea that, you know, viable treatments currently exist or or viable options exist if one were to get COVID-19 or even potentially to prevent them from getting COVID-19. And therefore, they don't need the vaccine because um, they can just treat it effectively if they get it. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so that's a, a very interesting philosophy. I follow the philosophy of the Swiss cheese model. Let me explain what that is a little bit. Imagine you've got a block of Swiss cheese and you've sliced it up all throughout. And if you were to pull out one of those slices, you would see that there may be some Swiss cheese holes in there. Um, and each slice would have the holes in different places. Maybe some slices would have more holes than other slices. But the bottom line is, is that the more slices of Swiss cheese you put in there, the less likely you're going to be able to find a hole that's going to get through all of those slices. And that's the general principle here that we see with the Swiss cheese model of making sure that we have the best protection we have to avoid the outcomes that we don't want to have. Let let me put it in a different perspective. In the operating room, we want to make sure that we have no post-operative infections. And we have a lot of layers that we put into that. For instance, the the surgeon wears a mask. Um, They sterilize the instruments. They put a solution, a sterilizing solution over the area of the skin that they're going to make the incision. Um, I mean, this goes on and on. Positive pressure ventilation in the room, a scrub nurse, uh, adjusting the humidity in the room just right, adjusting the temperature in the room just right. So we don't say that because sterilizing the equipment works, then therefore the mask doesn't work. Or say the fact that we have to um, put sterilization uh, solution on the skin, that therefore we don't have to humidify the room. I mean, that's, that's foreign to medical thinking. I mean, if we even think about it in the general practice, right? We, we, we do tr- uh, crash tests on vehicles, uh, not because we don't think seat belts work, uh, we, we don't put airbags into vehicles because we don't think crash. T- I mean, what we're doing is we're doing multiple layers because the more layers we have, the better protection we're going to have in the end to avoid the, the undesired uh, outcome at the end. So to hear this about saying that uh, people are getting vaccinated, but because we're making everyone wear masks, that must mean that the vaccines don't work. That, that's just completely uh, I'm lost on that. That's not the way we think in medicine. We try to avoid these things. And so the Swiss cheese model is is how we we think about this. 